Although the title of this hearing implies a much needed discussion, we're likely going to be forced to listen to transphobic bigotry. Forcing a transgender child to choose between living an authentic life and playing a game is cruel. I ask that while we sit through this hearing and hear the hateful misinformation, I'm sure is going to come our way. Let us not forget that children are at the core of this issue. There's a place for everyone to play sports in this country. But unsafe, unfair, and discriminatory practices towards women must stop. Inclusion cannot be prioritized over safety and fairness. And Ranking Member Lee, if my testi testimony makes me transphobic, then I believe your opening monologue makes you a misogynist. Well, that was a fiery exchange. And that was Riley Gaines going after squad member Summer Lee during a hearing on women's rights in sports. Riley Gaines joins us now. Riley, you called out the Illinois State Women's Cycling Championship because... Two transgender women took first and second place. What can you do about that? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, what I think needs to be done about that. I've been saying for a while now, and granted, I didn't always think this. Uh, at first, I didn't think women should boycott because I didn't, I didn't think it's us who should have to compromise. I, I was waiting for the people in the position to, to make changes, to do the right thing, but that's a, that's a naive thought. Uh, but now I do believe women should boycott. Uh, these events where men are competing. And I've been saying this for the past few months, but it's time it's incentivized. Uh, and so after some conversations with some different people, I've decided now that I will personally and, and happily pay the prize money, uh, that a woman were to lose out on. So in this photo here, the girl who placed third behind these two men, uh, the prize money she lost out on, if she were to concede and doesn't compete, I will happily pay her the money. Now, you want to have any woman being asked to compete against a transgender woman, drop out, boycott, don't race, don't run. That what you're saying? I think it's effective. I think that's how we send the message that enough is enough and that we as women aren't going to put up with it anymore because right now what we're being asked to do and what we are doing, what I did at that national championships is we smiled when we stepped aside and allowed these men onto our podiums. And it's not because we're okay with being discriminated against on the basis of our sex. It's because we're being told to. And as women, of course, we're, we're, uh, we're more emotionally driven. We're more empathetic. Uh, we're more, more likely to be people pleasers. We don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. But guess what? It's not, it, it shouldn't be, it's not, it doesn't make you not compassionate to d call out an injustice when sure. you see it. Uh, what do you think of this? The president of an LGBTQ advocacy, advocacy group says that women should, quote, learn to lose gracefully to transgender competitors. Any response to that? Well, it's funny because this president, it's the president of the National Women's Law Center who said that. So it's not even technically an LGBTQ advocacy center. It's a women's center who said that. Yeah. Uh, and let it be known that this women's center has not released a statement yet condemning any of the violence going on against the women in the Middle East, but that's exactly. besides the point. Yep. Um, this, women who, this woman who said that uh, about losing gracefully, first, let me be clear, she was talking to me specifically. I didn't lose to Thomas, the six foot four man who competed against me at the national championships, uh, which is kind of embarrassing on his part that he couldn't beat me. We tied. Uh, so I certainly didn't lose. Uh, and secondly, this is coming from a woman who's probably never played a competitive sport in her entire life. Well said. Last one for you, real fast. The NCAA considering a proposal that would allow colleges to pay their athletes. What would that do to college sports? Yeah, it would be interesting to see. Uh, I, I will be very interested to, interested to see how this unfolds. Uh, I believe, uh, you know, someone who typically aligns conservative, I believe this ultimately would hurt college sports, especially the sports of football and basketball. Uh, I, I think when we're giving these athletes, young people, I'm talking 18, 19, 20 years old, uh, when we're giving them millions and millions of dollars in sponsorships and endorsements, uh, I believe it makes the game less competitive. Uh, and I think it's just irresponsible to, to give that much money to a, a young person without the proper financial training. I do believe... Uh, you know, coaches and other people benefiting off these athletes. I, I do believe there's a process that should be in place, uh, but I think basketball and football will ultimately be harmed by this. Okay, we hear you. Riley Gaines, great to have you on the show. Come back soon, okay? See you again. Thank you.